In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Let's begin our celebration by first calling to mind all our sins and all our failures and ask God for forgiveness and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of art. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Book of Wisdom speaks to us of the night of the first Passover when the people of Israel waited and prepared for the Lord's coming to free them from the slavery of Egypt. It is with the same preparedness that we have to await the coming of the Lord Jesus. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The letter to the Hebrews tells us of Abraham and our other ancestors in faith who believed and put their trust in the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the suns on the seashore. All these died in faith, they did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show what they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, 
they would have had the opportunity to return. But now, they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day the Son of Man will come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant, on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have the servants recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Kahit sa ang bahagi ng buhay natin, kahit anong stage ng buhay natin, meron laging importante para sa atin. Kaya every now and then, kinakailangan natin tinatanong yung ating sarili, ano ba yung importante sa buhay ko? What is important in my life today? For infants, halimbawa, that very early stage of life, for infants, ang importante ay eh, dede, gatas, di ba? Either from the mother's breast, or from the bottle. Basta makainom ng gatas, di ba? Yan ang pinaka-importante dahil doon iiyak siya. No, siguro importante din kung basta o madumi yung kanyang lampin. Pero mas importante talaga yung pag-inom ng gatas. Kaya nga, kahit anong mahawakan, di ba? Baby, kahit anong mahawakan, di adala sa bibig. Di ba? Because that's the most important uh, thing in their lives. Yung pagkain, yung gatas hindi natin sila masisisi kasi nandun sila sa ganung stage. Pag lumaki na yung bata, naging naglalaro-laro na. Ano importante? Yun nga, naglalaro-laro na. Importante, laruan. Babae, dolls, kung lalaki siguro, mga baril-baril or something. Pana o G.I. Joe or something. Kakakotse. No? Laruan. Kahit anong laruan. At paglalaro, yun ang importante sa kanila. Kaya hindi natin pwedeng sisiin yung mga bata kung mahilig maglaro natural yun sa kanila. Importante yun sa kanila. Talagang importante kasi that develops their social skills. Natutu natututo silang makisama sa ibang tao, hindi lamang sa mga kapatid o mga nanay, tatay. Sa ibang tao, natutu natututo siyang makisama. He learns 
He learns how to socialize, to deal with other people other than his family. Diba? So, important yun sa kanila. Hindi natin yung pwedeng i-deprive, no? You cannot deprive children of playing. Because that's their nature. Important sa, sa kanila yun. Pag lumalaki-laki na, naging teenager na, yung toys, yung laruan, naging cellphone. O sige nga, gawin yun, di ba? Madalas ginagawa mo, na, at least naririnig ko na, ginagawa ang punishment ng mga magulang, kinoconfiscate yung cellphone ng teenager na anak. Laking punishment yun. Kasi importante sa mga teenagers yung cellphone, no? magpa-Facebook, Facebook, kung ano-ano man na social media. Hindi, minsan, hindi nga lang teenagers, di ba? Kahit mga adults na, nakadikit pa rin, naka-glue naka pa rin yung muka. No? Even adults are glued to their cell phones. So it's important for a lot of people, cell phones. No? And you cannot deny that because it has its own purpose. It has its own value. And as we grow even older, pag adults sa talaga, importante sa atin, what? Trabaho, work, a car maybe, a good house, a good pension plan. So yun na importante sa atin, to prepare for the future when we can no longer work. So that's important too. Hindi natin yung pwede yung pagkait. No? Kailangan yun. Importante yun. Responsable yung ganun. That you prepare by you know, building up, building your uh, house and working hard and building your, uh, getting a car or whatever, transportation, caring for your family. Importante, importante. Kung matanda ka na talaga, ang importante, ang importante, gamot. Di ba? Importante gamot. Importante yung mobility. No, it's important for older people that they are still at least able to move around. No? So we cannot deprive them. We shouldn't be dis depriving them. No, di natin pagbabawal sa mga nakakatanda sa atin na maglakad-lakad, mag-exercise. Importante to be mobile, na gumagalaw. Importante yun. Pero minsan kasi, importante lahat siya, walang problema. At dapat lang na ginagawa natin. From childhood, the infancy, until adulthood, until old age, kung ano yung merong bawat isang stage, may kanya-kanyang importanteng bagay. Each stage has its own um, important things in that stage of life. They're all important. But sometimes, those important things can also be, the, be a distraction to even more important things. Ano yung more important things? What are the more important things? The more important things are those things that last longer. Kasi ito mga importante, mga toys, mga cars, mga bahay, mga uh, trabaho. They're only for this life. Di ba? Pang buhay ng mundo lang yan. Pang dito lang yan sa mundo. Mas importante yung pang, la, pang next life. No? Yung pang walang hanggan. Yung mga pang makadiyos. Yun ang mas importante. Ano yung may malaki mong bahay kung wala ka namang totoong kaibigan? Dahil hindi ka marunong magmahal, hindi ka marunong makisama. Ano mo yung uh, successful na job, na trabaho? Kung lahat naman tao galit sa'yo dahil masungit ka, manggagamit ka. There are more important things also in life. If you are if you're gonna think about the life to come, the next life, the more important things. At siguro yun yung, yun yung sinasabi sa atin ng gospel. We don't know when our life will end. We don't know when the Son of Man is coming. Therefore, we always have to be ready. Ready with the more important things in life to be focused on what dapat mas inaasikaso natin. What are the most important things that we need to really be uh, taking care of. So be ready. Be alert and be responsible. Ano yung uh, kailangan nating binibigyan ng pansin? That we are able to do what God expects us to do. Remember the, the gospel that we read? That the servants are expected to be ready to open the door once the master comes and knocks. Nahanda sila. Handa sila na gawin ko ano yung expect sa kanila. And so we ask ourselves, 
What does God expect of us? Ay ba iba yun? Iba-iba. But generally, God expects us to do the right thing. Gawin ko ano yung tama, kung yung ayon sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Eh medyo yun, medyo mahirap, no? That's a little bit challenging. To be able to do the will of God, and how do we know what the will of God is for us? Meron, ibang, meron a few uh, suggestions na pwede natin gawin. Una-una, tanggalin natin yung mga distractions sa buhay natin. Kaya ngayon, yun yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Gospel. Sell your belongings and give alms. As sinabi din sa, sa ating mga readings. Where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Isipin, put your treasure where it really matters. So, focus on the real thing, on the more important thing, and remove distractions. At least, do not make them as important as the more, the spiritual things. Trust in God. Magtiwala tayo. Kaya hindi natin kailangan masyadong alalahanin yung mga sobra na material things sa buhay natin. Kasi, God will provide. If you trust in God, God will provide. Para malaman natin kung ano yung gusto ng Diyos na gawin natin, we need to have some quiet time. Hindi galaw ng galaw palagi. Ano? Okay, lagi preoccupied yung ating isip ng kung ano ng mga bagay. We have no more, no more time to listen to God. To listen to God to say to who is whispering to us, ito yung dapat mong ginagawa. Oh. Ito yung mission mo for this part of your life. Mission mo para sa mga anak mo. Mission mo para sa mga katrabaho mo. Mission mo para sa neighborhood mo. Makinig. Paano ka makikinig kung lagi kang preoccupied with so many other things, right? So, kinakailangan quiet time. Kinakailangan natin ng quiet time to be able to listen to one another and to God. To listen to your children, to listen to your spouse, to listen to your neighbors, to your boss, your subordinates to listen. Importante yun. Importante. It tells us, it directs us on what God wants us to do. On what is better, what is best. And to do what is right. Kahit walang nakatingin. Kahit walang nakapapansin. To do whatever is right. So yun yung siya sabi sa atin siguro ng gospel ngayon. Focus. Focus. Be ready and respond to God's call by listening first to God's call and responding accordingly. Hingin natin sa misa na ito na sana maging malinaw ang ating pagdinig, na sana makabigay tayo ng oras sa Diyos to be able to listen to God. Let us give ourselves that time to be able to listen to God and to know what God wants us to do at any given point in our lives. Let us all stand now. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, of all, of all things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Awaken our hearts, Father, that we may always stand ready in our work for your greater glory and the peace of all people of goodwill. Lovingly, after each petition, we pray, Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. For the Church, grant Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and the lay faithful, hearts that are all, always ready to listen to the communities they serve and the persons they encounter, we pray. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. For all who serve in the government, grant them hearts that are ready to choose, always and everywhere, the common good, with the truth reign and opposed in their hearts, we pray. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. For many of us who are undergoing great suffering, grant us hearts that are always open and sensitive to the movements of your spirit. Move the hearts of the people around our suffering brethren towards providing the necessary help they desperately need. We pray. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. For our departed loved ones, welcome them back into the eternal communion of your heart. We pray. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, make us ready servants of your kingdom. Loving Father, you sent your Son so we may actively participate in your work of communion and redemption. Make our hearts more sensitive to your spirit that we may always be ready to take the mission towards the building of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power to transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours 
that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew call, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may, may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now to our Father in heaven in the words that our Lord himself has taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Paalala lang po mamaya sa pag-communion natin bago tayo dumating sa dulo para mag-receive na tumanggap ng body and blood of Christ sa communion. Tanggalin na natin yung mask para mas madali tayong makatanggap. Tapos, sana ay mag-step aside and receive right away. Isubo agad ang blessed sacrament, ang body and blood of Christ. Sana huwag na natin dadalin sa kwa, sa upuan, lalong-lalo huwag natin dadalin sa bahay. At huwag rin natin hahatian yung mga bata na hindi pa nakapag-first communion. Okay? So, take off your mask, receive properly, step aside, receive right away, and do not share with other, with the younger children. Okay? This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that you should enter into my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul Jesus. shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacraments that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakikisa sa Santa Misa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as this ended, we go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. We're now going to pray for the sick and bless your religious articles. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary. May all these articles be blessed and those who use them made holy as they fulfill the will of God according to the example of the Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.